Hello, and welcome back. In this lesson, we'll be looking at some of the main infrastructure as code tool categories that exist today. Now, as you're going through this lesson and uh, part two that follows, uh, keep in mind that many of these infrastructure as code tools can bridge functionality across these different tool categories. Uh, most of the tools are purpose-built to solve a particular problem, and their main functionality is focused within one category. Uh, but supplemental functions or features are often weaved into the tool that can uh, extend functionality in various areas. Understanding these core areas can help you identify the best infrastructure's code tool for your needs, and also recognize when a tool is potentially breaking out of its main uh, category it was built for, and offering useful capabilities in some other areas. So if you or your business needs some IAC capabilities in uh, two or three areas, Getting familiar with these core categories in the next two lessons will be the foundation of understanding if a certain tool is going to meet your specific needs. Uh, maybe you'll realize you need uh, two or more tools, each focused on its core capabilities. Um, or maybe you pick a you know, single tool that's focused on one area, um, but has some extra capabilities that are you know, good enough for you to tackle some of your other requirements. Uh, so perhaps you compromise on a, some you know, functionality uh, but in return, you get a single tool to learn and maintain. So in our previous lesson, we had a brief overview of the five core categories of the infrastructure's core tools. So in this video, we'll be covering the first three. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, our scripts, uh, templating tools, and configuration management tools. So let's understand the first one here, uh, scripts in the context of infrastructure as code. So scripts are a basic way to help automate the often tedious manual configuration or setup tasks. If you have a uh, server that you're uh, you know, trying to get set up and deployed for the first time in your infrastructure, uh, you may need to install a uh, operating system on it um, and then configure a variety of uh, you know, networking uh, configuration, uh, installing package updates, and then uh, installing your own uh, application uh, on it as well. With scripts, you typically look at all the you know, manual steps you need to perform each of these tasks, uh, and then write some code to accomplish each of these steps. You can then run that code on the servers in the future uh, to automate all these manual steps that you had to do in the past. Um, and of course, all these manual steps would be very time consuming and uh, error prone, especially if you had to set up a hundred or more servers exactly the same way. Then next, we'll be taking a look at our image templating category. Now, the idea here with templating tools is that instead of executing code on a server to configure it, you define how that server should be set up in the form of a template or image. Um, so things like uh, you know, what operating system would be installed, uh, what packages to install, and any uh, static configuration files to include uh, would all be included or defined in that template. And then from this template, the tool would generate a image file with all the uh, required configuration baked in. Now, if we needed to set up 100 servers exactly the same way, uh, with the script method we were just talking about, we'd have to run our script code on each of these 100 servers so that the script can execute and get each server into the desired end state. Uh, you know, the state where we have our operating system installed, all the software packages and configuration ready to go. Um, really, it's this end state that we want to achieve with our uh, resources here. Now to contrast this with the uh, image templating technique, it avoids having to run our script over and over again on our different servers. Um, you know, if all we want to do is have a number of them in the exact same state anyway. Again, so instead of running a script on each of our servers here, um, each one of these is deployed off basically the same uh, you know, image template and they'd all be configured exactly the same way. So with our image templating tools, uh, these can create images based on our template files that we have all our application and configuration setup defined. Uh, and then that bakes all that uh, setup into a complete image or snapshot of our desired end state. Now, some templating tools also let you take uh, snapshots of an existing system. Uh, so if you have a server or a virtual machine and uh, you know it's configured in a perfect end state and uh, you need to create more copies of them, uh, this is a good way to create sort of a snapshot of that current state and then the tool will basically take that and create a image file for you. You can then use that image to deploy any number of uh, additional VMs or containers based on that. 
Now, one of the more popular tools in this templating category is Docker. Now, I won't get into explaining uh, Docker here, but if you are interested to learn more about uh, containers and Docker, or just after a quick refresher, uh, there is a video on the Cloud Vikings YouTube channel that gives a high-level overview of Docker and containers if you want to check that out. Now, for the context of our templating tool discussion here, uh, Docker lets us create new container images based off of uh, an existing container that we've uh, modified to fit our needs. Um, and then we can essentially take a snapshot of its current state and create a new container image from that. Um, or we can also define a, you know, a template essentially uh, from scratch with everything needed to run our containerized application code. Uh, and we do that inside a Docker file. Now, other than Docker, we also have popular tools like Packer and Vagrant, uh, both of which originate from uh, HashiCorp the same company that created Terraform. Uh, we'll actually be doing a quick lesson on HashiCorp as well as a bit of a history lesson uh, in an upcoming lesson. So tools like Packer and Vagrant here can help assemble virtual machine images uh, all the way to full development environments. Using Packer as an example, uh, we define all the ingredients we need in our resource like operating system, uh, what packages to install and configuration files to set up and so forth. And then the tool bakes all that into a complete image file that we can run as a virtual machine. So why is all this templating stuff actually useful? Well, we have an upcoming lesson that really dives into all the benefits of infrastructure as code, uh, but to touch on two of the core benefits of using templating images here, I'll mention the provisioning speed and consistency benefits. So say you have a e-commerce store uh, and the marketing team announces some amazing sale promotion on all your uh, store's social channels all at once, and uh, perhaps it's a limited time sale with some great deals you can't miss out on. Uh, so word spreads quickly and you get tens of thousands of customers to your site, uh, all making purchase transactions within minutes of the announcement. Now, assuming you have some type of automatic scaling capabilities for your infrastructure, uh, where you can horizontally scale your uh, infrastructure by adding more virtual machines to it, uh, perhaps a bunch of new VMs are added to your environment to handle the sudden spike in load. Um, you want these virtual machines to be ready to help out with that spike of load as soon as possible. Now imagine the scenario with a uh, scripting method alone. Uh, maybe we have some form of uh, base VM image here. Um, and then we need to run uh, you know, a number of scripts in sequence to configure the uh, operating system, uh, install various packages, install our application software, configure it. Uh, and then at that point, maybe the VM would actually be ready to handle uh, some of the incoming uh, requests. Now, depending on the complexity of the configuration and the size of the uh, packages and applications that uh, you need to install, um, all this can take quite a few minutes or perhaps even hours in some examples to uh, set up. So when you need to uh, you know, scale out your infrastructure to handle uh, you know, sudden spikes in traffic, um, you know, waiting even five minutes for virtual machines to be fully provisioned and ready to help with that load is often not acceptable. Uh, when you need more capacity, you need it uh, you know, ready as soon as possible. Now, if you compare this to our uh, templating category, where we'd end up with a, uh, you know, some form of golden image snapshot of our virtual machine end state with all the you know, OS uh, application components and all the configuration already done, uh, these VMs can typically be you know, up and running in you know, a minute or two and really quickly start handling that increase in traffic. Now, the next category to understand are the configuration management tools. Uh, popular tools in this category are uh, Ansible, Salt, uh, Chef, and Puppet. And their main focus is to remotely manage uh, the configuration state of resources like physical servers, virtual machines, databases, and so forth. Now, while these configuration management tools have common traits to those in the scripting category, uh, they have a number of important benefits over simply running scripts. So first, when working in large organizations, when multiple people are involved with uh, the uh, server administration responsibilities, there's often a huge mess of scripts that get created over time. Uh, some scripts may be written in different programming languages, and those that are in the same language may have uh, wildly different coding standards, uh, if any standards are used at all. Uh, and all this can end up having very complex and error-prone scripts that are hard to manage, update, and track. Readability can also be a challenge. Uh, you may have to dive into multiple scripts, all with different programming languages and conventions being used uh, to help debug a certain issue. Um, 
Now, if you're the person on call at 3 a.m. and need to figure out, uh, you know, why a new batch of servers or uh, VMs won't deploy properly, uh, all this inconsistency can be, you know, a problem when trying to isolate issues quickly. Configuration management tools like Salt, uh, Ansible, Chef, and Puppet have a more strict structure required and a common language and format that's well documented. Uh, and these tools offer ways of handling sensitive parameters like passwords more securely as well. Uh, with scripts, sensitive information and passwords are often mishandled, and it can lead to exposed credentials for critical infrastructure components. These configuration management tools also excel at allowing you to run the same configuration setup repeatedly on servers, even if their current state isn't exactly what you expect. For example, if you use scripts to configure a large number of servers in your environment, when all those servers are freshly deployed and the script is run, you can be fairly confident that they're all you know, configured in the same state. Um, but as weeks and months go by, uh, maybe some of the configuration files are manually changed. Uh, maybe someone stops a running application for some reason on a few of the servers, or maybe someone updated some packages on a few of the servers, and they have newer versions of software installed than was initially configured from the scripts. Now, if you needed to rerun your initial configuration scripts again at a later time, uh, it's quite possible they'd run into a variety of error conditions due to the changed state of some of the servers. Now, you could certainly build in a ton of conditional logic into your scripts to check for the existing state and then determine the actions to take based on that server uh, to get it back into the desired configuration state. Uh, but that would take a lot more development effort and add even more complexity and readability issues for your scripts. Configuration management tools have most of this conditional logic built into their uh, capabilities already. So if you've configured a server to have the Nginx web server process running, um, and in fact, it's already installed and running on that particular server, it won't try to install and start that uh, service again on that host if you rerun your uh, playbook or cookbook, uh, if you have uh, that configuration defined in them. You essentially define your desired end configuration state and the configuration management tools have the logic already built in to check the existing state of the server and then know what uh, necessary steps to take to get it back into compliance with the configuration you have defined. Now, I mentioned that configuration management tools are you know, somewhat comparable to scripts to configure your servers, although with very uh, important benefits. But what about that other category of uh, templating tools? Well, with templating tools in general, if you're deploying a new container or a virtual machine image, you typically want all your software installed and configuration baked into that image itself. To really take advantage of the benefits of using these image templates for your infrastructure resources, you wouldn't typically do any configuration changes or application updates on that resource after it's been deployed. You know, if you needed to update some uh, software packages or install some new application version to run, you generally go back to your templating tool like Docker or Packer and build a completely new gold image with those new changes baked in. You then typically do some form of rolling deployment in your environment and uh, eventually replace all the old servers running the old image and replace them with uh, new versions uh, based on the new image that you created. Now this takes us to that uh, somewhat famous pets versus cattle comparison for uh, how to treat cloud-based resources like uh, containers and virtual machine servers. So with pets, uh, these are our uh, typically manually built servers that have uh, unique configuration settings, and they're treated as very important systems. Uh, we give them special names, uh, pay a lot of attention to them, uh, give them a lot of love and maintenance. Um, you know, these are often our legacy systems, uh, databases, load balancers, uh, firewalls, or you know, any other you know, special snowflake systems usually very little or zero human involvement with the cattle-based servers. Uh, the deployment and failure scenarios here are heavily automated around these cattle-based resources. So in modern cloud-native designs, treating your infrastructure components as cattle has a lot of advantages. Now, getting back to our scripting and configuration management tools and comparing them to templating tools, we now have these uh, tools available that sort of fit with either the pet or uh, cattle approaches of managing our resources. Now, of course, there's again a lot of overlap here, uh, but in general, scripting and configuration management tools are best for your uh, pet type infrastructure resources, uh, your long running servers where you need to 
centrally and remotely managed software patches and configuration changes for a large number of resources in a somewhat automated way. Now the templating method is the more modern and preferred cattle approach for managing your resources. When you have your resource image with everything uh, baked into it, uh, you know, tens or hundreds or perhaps even thousands of servers or containers can be deployed, uh, all based off that exact same base image. If some resources uh, become unhealthy, the entire server or resource is replaced with a new one. Then if updates are needed, like a configuration file change or a package update for security patch, uh, rather than doing these updates on the existing running servers like you would with uh, scripts or configuration management tools, uh, here the base image is updated with uh, the new changes, and then all the resources are replaced with new ones that contain the new uh, base image. Now, hybrid solutions of this pets and cattle approach can exist as well, uh, essentially allowing you to take advantage of the benefits of both, but you're also subject to some of the cons of both of these approaches as well. Now, I won't get into this uh, too much here, uh, but maybe you have some workload where uh, the type of application running and its uh, requests handling uh, don't easily allow for the systems to be replaced without uh, significant interruption to the business or your customers. Uh, maybe these servers have very large operating systems and software installation footprint on them. Uh, and deploying them from scratch and doing all the software installation and setup, uh, even through scripts or configuration management, uh, could potentially take hours. So one example approach you could take here is uh, perhaps creating a base image with a tool like Packer, to uh, have you know, your large core operating system and software installations already baked in. And this avoids having to do the large downloads and installation steps on each server individually that uh, you know, may take hours. You can do all these uh, sort of large painful steps once, uh, create a golden image snapshot of that server at that stage, uh, and then use that image for the rest of your server fleet. This can cut down on hours of time and prevents your network from being overwhelmed if you deploy you know, hundreds of servers all at the exact same time and they all had to potentially download large software packages all in parallel. Then once all the servers are deployed based off that base image, your configuration tool, uh, you know, maybe something like Ansible, uh, comes into the picture here uh, where you can complete the final configuration steps and then do the long-term patching and configuration update activities on these long-running servers. Again, while the cattle approach is best here, uh, especially to take advantage of all the scaling and automation capabilities of cloud service providers, uh, I wanted to spend some time here to help understand the differences of these different approaches. Um, and also just to be aware that hybrid approaches are possible across these infrastructures code categories of tools. Now, what tool you pick really depends on your unique requirements. Now that wraps up our look at the first core categories of infrastructure as code tools. Uh, we still have two more to go, uh, orchestration tools and provisioning tools. Uh, we cover both of those in the next lesson coming up. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.